So we've got a question here from Facebook from Tim Andrew Murray. He says, why is it when movies or TV shows show Highland culture, it's always browns and grays, when in history there was many other colors, like red, <laughs> blue, and yellow? Yep. The, the reason yep. that, it, <laughs> yes, 100% correct. Why does Hollywood, I'll just say Hollywood in general, um, think that only blues and grays were worn a few hundred years ago, a couple hundred years ago, because they're playing into a, a, a sense of aesthetic that people have. They're playing into a, a BS notion that, mm-hmm. you know, no color existed back then. It's yep. all colors, a recent invention right. of the 1920s. Um, <laughs> so, Came in after the talkies. Yeah. <laughs> indeed. Um, Charlie Chaplin. The, so it's, it's one of those things where it's, they're playing into, I want to say a stereotype, but a stereotype of the, the medieval ages or Victorian ages and that kind of thing. Yeah. And they yeah. didn't, even though it's, it's, you're right, it's not true. Why yeah. did they do it? Because that's what the audience wants. That's what the audience expects. It's wrong. They're lying. They could correct the misnomer by showing different things, but they don't want to because then they're, they're fighting, they're pushing against the tide versus just like, it's, it's I, I almost want to say that you're, you're not breaking the fourth wall is the wrong word, but it's you're, you're pulling people's brains out of the thing. If they saw Bonnie Prince Charlie in a film or Jamie Frazier in Outlander walking around in bright colors, as he probably would have, then it's like, wait, that doesn't, that doesn't fit with what my preconceived notions think of this time right, period right. to have in clothing. Right. So you're, you're breaking it and you're, you're, you're saying in your own brain, that's wrong. Or the average person is saying, that's wrong. That shouldn't be like that. And you're taking them out in a moment. But if you play into their prejudices that, oh, it's all drab, it's all muddy, it's all BS, it's all gray way back then, then you're not taking them out of the moment and you're allowing the fantasy of the film to live. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I think there's a number of different reasons now, actually. But you just made me think of another a different angle on it. Yeah, Hollywood is, I, for the record, I think that Hollywood is getting a lot better at historical representation. Um, the past 10, 15 years has seen a really good escalation in accuracy and authenticity. Um, Mac and I were just comparing notes on um, All Quiet on the Western Front. And good he movie. Was, and he Very was saying good. how, uh, oh, it's rough, man, but it's but it's real. And, but we were talking talking about the clothing. He's saying like some of his reenactor buddies, I was like, wow, that button is wrong or whatever. You know, some details. But you know what? That's a far cry from how bad things were back in the day yeah. where it's like, well, this is a World War II uniform. Ah, just, you know, just throw some different decorations on it. It'll be fine. Um, and the material culture represented in that movie from, from my perspective as a, as a social historian, um, not historian, buff, history buff, um, was really good. So Hollywood is getting better. But yeah, there's there's this there's the old cliche that if it was in the past, it was drab, it was dirty, all the lighting was torches inside for some reason, like pitch torches in your castle, you know, and and you know all these horrible horrible cliches. Welcome, gentle sir knight. Um, which are wrong. Um, there's a classic cartoon where uh, it shows uh, a movie set, okay, and the top picture is like a street in Rome. And there's all this beautiful color, and all the statues are colored and everything. And then, and the director says, "That looks great. Looks great. Okay, apply the antiquity filter." And this guy comes out and throws <laughs> white paint on everything, you know, because like, okay, great, shoot. Um, but I think there's another reason. In our modern sensibilities, we think bright color. Um, we associate bright colors and lots of colors with either femininity or lack of seriousness. So you can't have a hero in bright colored, many colored outfits because it doesn't look serious. I mean, you think about all the gritty uh, comic book movies they have now. It's like they make them darker and drabber and more monochrome because it looks more serious, you know, as opposed to like the bright, crazy colors you'd have in comic books in like the 60s through the 80s. Um, There's a reason why they make the joke about Wolverine. You know, he makes the one joke in the X-Men movie about how, you you know, why don't you just wear, you know, gold and bright blue instead. You actually go outside in these things? What would you prefer? Yellow spandex? They're poking fun at the old X-Men costumes, which are all these ridiculously bright colors. Yellow and blue, yeah. Exactly. So it's just like, 
we think bright colors mean not serious. So we tend to go for drab um, for that reason also. You'll notice like in, in Outlander, Prince Charlie is in it. And he is, of course, they, they make him kind of foppish. And he's got, you know, brightly colored tartan on and, and his blue sash and the wig and all that kind of stuff. And he is the mo one of the more colorful people characters. in yeah. Yeah, characters in, in the episodes. But he's also the one you're not supposed to respect as much. If they wanted him to be a hero, they would probably dress down his costume. You see where I'm coming with this? Where I'm going with this? I, I do. I don't know how much I agree. But I, I see the angle you're taking. Yes. Yeah. I think there, there are different version, different reasons why there's been the problem with the media all along. I think it's I think it's changed a little bit. You know, you still have issues where everything in a film is really, really accurate, except for like the leading lady's hairstyle. Or the fact that she's wearing freaking makeup. You know, because she has to appeal to a set expectation of the audience. Yes. Like you were talking about. <clears throat> it's so. it's but that is also the problem with creating, with commercialism. I'm going to get a little broad here. Commercialism versus accuracy. It's mm -hmm. your 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 movie still or piece still has to make money. It still has to be, yeah. it has to be a broader audience, and it has to play to certain stereotypes and certain yeah. you know things that you believe to be true, mm -hmm. and play into that versus being historically accurate 100% because it's not a good story. You know, with uh, Braveheart, you know, William Wallace and the uh, the Queen, you know, she would have been, what, you know, three or Princess, whatever yeah, at the never, time. Yeah, so it's one uh, of those things where it's, it, they're, they have to play it up for the story's sake because that makes a better story. It's uh, the marketing of history versus actual history because the story is more yeah. interesting than the fact. So what do you want? Do you Sometimes. want a better story or do you want a or, or more factual data i'm a nerd i want the factual story sorry Correct. watch the documentary <laughs> but if, it, if it's a fantasy call it a fantasy i mean like but I that love... doesn't sell as many commercials i don't know I mean, yeah true but you know i love the movie 13th warrior but it, there's nothing accurate about that movie <laughs> nothing but it's a fun movie it's a yeah. romp you know but, but uh call it what it is yeah call yeah. it what it is but i i yeah i think that's a really good point of discussion we could go on and on about but i think the classic reason was that the assumption was that Color, like you said, is color's a modern thing. They didn't have color back then. Oh, they were primitives. Oh, 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 you know, they weren't civilized like us now. They didn't um, have Lily Pulitzer dresses right, right. and neon colors from the 80s, but they had color, I promise. Yeah, they had a, a lot of color. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think it's also added to, I think it's like, you know, heroes are supposed to be dark and earthy and Brooding. no frills and, yeah. you know, just like, well, I'm too serious for color. So. I'm Batman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where is she? You know. My Batman impression. Uh yes. All right. Who was that? Joker. Perfect example. He's a villain. He's bright colored. Right? Damn Jokers. Why? Why so serious? Yes, indeed. Good. Eric does a pretty good Joker face. That was wise. good. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. Oh, but my impression's bad? Yeah. No, your the, the face, the, the high cheekbones, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll just I'll slice you open. It's fine. All right. Okay, Pilgrim, we got to get over that rise and get over to the Highlands before the Jacobites get here and take over the castle. Ah, see, you ain't ready for kilts in this culture. And you ain't ready for color, neither. You don't know what you're talking about, kid. You screw it. You got screw loose. Oh, you want me to wear colorful tartans, Murray? I'll do it. You want the, you want the old tartan, Murray? I'll pluck it out of the sky and give it to you. I don't know. <laughs> 